Leader Barclay, thanks so much for being here. Great to be on your show. Thanks for having me. Of course, anytime. So before we get to session, I want to touch on what happened in Washington, D.C. this week. A lot of Democrats have blamed the president and some Republican members of Congress for what happened at the Capitol, the violence there. I'm wondering, as one of the state's leading Republicans, how do you respond to that? Well, I think, first of all, we condemn what happened in Washington. Obviously, we don't mind protests, but protest needs to be peaceful. When it crosses a line and enters violence, when they're breaking down you know, into the Capitol, I think that goes too far. So I think we all need to step forward and say, no, this isn't all right. Whether it's Democrat protesters, Republican protesters, uh, that's fine, but it just can't have you know, tremendous violence. And obviously the tragedy of having some deaths down there was too bad, really bad. Yeah, definitely. Uh, moving on to this year's sh session, because that's what I want to primarily talk to you about. The state is facing a $15 billion budget deficit. It's going to be a tough haul for lawmakers and the governor in this year's budget process. Republicans are in the minority in the assembly, but they often voice how they would like to balance the budget. I'm wondering, from your perspective, how could the state come out of this $15 billion budget gap if the federal government doesn't provide us with enough aid to fill that hole? Well, first of all, that is going to be a huge issue, I think, going through. We do have a new administration, obviously, coming into Washington. I happen to believe that it is the federal government's role to help uh, states with COVID costs. And obviously, New York had some tremendous costs as a result of COVID. So I'm still optimistic that there may be more aid. I'd like to see that go directly to localities, not necessarily have any filter through the state. I think localities are ones that are really suffering, uh, you know, with their budget shortfalls going forward. The one thing I think I feel, and I know my conference feels, is certainly we can't be raising taxes. New York already has an you know, incredibly high tax rate, whether it's income tax, whether it's sales tax, property tax, you name it, we leave the country in taxes. So, and then unfortunately, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle always seem to, that's their first choice, COVID or non-COVID, they always want to raise taxes. So we would push back on that. But we're going to have to make tough decisions. Ultimately, uh, you know, we spent a lot of money in New York State, and I think that probably it's not going to be able to continue just because, as you said, we're facing what, a 14, 15, 16 billion dollar shortfall, and that's just not going to be sustainable. You know, when we're looking at places where the state may be able to cut spending, are there areas that your conference has identified that you might want Democrats to take a closer look at to try to save some money so that they sure. don't have to raise taxes and raise revenue in different ways? And again, some of these things we've been suggesting uh, before COVID, but I think they're more you know, appropriate now than ever. How about some of the economic development programs that we've seen, we haven't seen great return on? The tax credits for Hollywood movie studios, things like that. Now that's not gonna necessarily get to the 15 billion, but I think it's a good start. And I think there's a lot of stuff that we can do more efficiently uh, in New York State. I've talked about for years, school aid formula, uh, where we're putting a lot of aid to higher wealth districts and not as much to low wealth. If we made a more equitable school aid formula, the state wouldn't have to pump as much money into state aid as, or school aid as we do now. So there's things like that that we can do. It's gonna be tough though. I don't think any of us can be naive the fact that very difficult decisions are gonna have to be made going forward. You know, Dan, that's one of the reasons I think we ought to one thing we have to do is reassert the legislative's power uh, in, in Albany. We've obviously granted the governor some extraordinary powers back in the spring uh, that he still has, has, and there's no reason now that we're, you know, being able to meet remotely. We had our first day of session yesterday. There's no need, reason that the legislature can't reassert itself, particularly as these budget issues comes up. I think that's when we really do have to have a strong voice. You know, I have to ask you, because Democrats have the majority in both the Senate and the Assembly, and we often see uh, big and small issues, the, the Democrats that lead both chambers can't agree on even them. If we give power back to the legislature, do you think that they can have as an effective response to the pandemic as the governor had in the spring? Well, I think they're going to have to, and I certainly want to work with my colleagues in our conference to accomplish that. But do we want just one person running New York State? And you know, maybe when they're actually addressing an emergency situation and the COVID pandemic, maybe. But I think when we talk about bigger issues like the budget, uh, certainly I was elected to come down here and represent my constituency, and I assume that's the case with all my colleagues in the legislature. So we ought to have a voice in that. And I'll look, I'll look to work with them, and hopefully they can also work where we can get some sort of good outcome, uh, and it's not just uh, you know similar to what we see happening in other places like in Washington. So besides new taxes, Democrats have some ideas to raise revenue for the state. Two of them that were in the news this week were the legalization of marijuana for recreational use and the legalization of online sports betting, two very big controversial issues in the state. I want to ask you about online sports betting first. So Republicans in the Senate, I know, are uh, in support of legalizing that. Where do Republicans in the Assembly stand? So first of all, uh, I'm just a little bit hesitant 
I, I don't have a problem looking at both these issues, but I do have a problem when we're looking at it as a way to raise revenue. I think if we're just doing that, then we're looking at the wrong perspective from a policy standpoint. We have to let these you know, stand or fall on their own basis, not just because we're doing desperate money for money on the state. So that, when our conference was sports betting, we haven't conferenced it. Uh, so I, even, I don't even know where I stand at. I'd like to see a little bit more detail. Uh, this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take a lot of, uh, you know, legislating, frankly, and I just want to see what the details are on that, and we'll conference it at some point, and probably, I don't know if we really get unanimity on it. There are probably some people in our council will be opposed to it, some will probably be in favor of it. And you think it's the same with marijuana? You're still divided in your conference, or I know that in the past, the, the Assembly Conference, the Assembly Republican Conference has been against legalization. Do you see that changing? Uh, it could. I still think probably for the majority of our members, again, we haven't conferenced this, but I would guess the majority of our members probably are opposed. I am opposed for it. Uh, you know, we're we're outlawing vaping. We're trying to push back on smoking. We obviously have problems with alcohol. It seems to me that we're heading in the complete wrong direction of legalizing another drug. But uh, people may have different opinions. Also, we want to see, again, the devil can be in the details, and there's obviously what they're going to do with the revenue. They're talking about expunging people's records, et cetera. So we'd want to see all the details of what's being proposed at every port and make, take a position. Before I let you go, Republicans in the Assembly have had a high priority since I've been covering the Capitol of trying to make state government more transparent, especially in the Assembly, also in the Senate, and trying to provide more access to the state government for the people of the state. I know that's going to be a priority for you again this year. Tell me about the changes that you'd like to see in the Assembly to improve that transparency and the ethics there. Well, I appreciate you asking that question, Dan. First of all, just yesterday in opening session, we renewed the last year's rules that limited our ability to debate from 30 minutes to 15 minutes. And we just think that's a complete backwards way to go. Uh, one of the strongest things we do as a minority is debate bills and point out you know, where we think legislation is bad or where we think legislation is good. And by taking our voice away, I think it's completely the wrong direction. So one of the rules changes that we're going to continue to push back is to get back to that 30 minute debate period. I think that's uh, critical. But, you know, every, uh, transparency, you know, that is critical that we um, push it away. The budget process has been historically, you know, three men, as you know, behind closed doors. There's no reason uh, other government bodies do it in a more transparent, open way. And if we could do that, we think ultimately it would be a much better product at the end of the day. So we're going to continue to push all, at every level, ethics, you know, transparency, budget transparency, legislative transparency. And we have a whole uh, host of uh, rules changes that will help uh, provide that or accomplish that. All right. Assembly Republican Leader Will Barclay, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.